Good morning, Rose Red Homestead. Today's video is going to show you how over the past month I've been doing some work out in the greenhouse, getting ready for our first spring planting. And um, it's uh, up to the point where I've transplanted some of the lettuce that um, I had planted over a month ago and also planted some seeds. Uh, we have had a pretty rough spring like many of you, only not nearly as bad as other parts of the country. And uh, just know that you have been in our thoughts and we've been really concerned over those of you who have lived in the path of um, terrific snowstorms and the tornadoes and all of the weather um, events that have been happening. We certainly have had the wettest winter in all of the 12 years that we have lived in this house. And so for the past month, we've had freezing weather, snowstorms. We even woke up to a, a snowstorm again yesterday. So um, we'll take you out there. It starts at the 1st of March and it ends um, just a few days ago as I was planting seeds out there. Now, one thing I did want to mention is that as we show different products on our videos, for instance, the brands and types of soil amendments that we use, we have received some comments about those. Uh, the Kellogg potting soil um, and raised bed soil that we use, and then the miracle Grow indoor potting soil have both come under, um, well, criticism for one thing, and then in the case of um, the Kellogg, some warnings that it contains bad stuff. Well, here are my quick thoughts on that. And we don't mind people expressing their opinions when they do so respectfully. That is never an issue with us. Um, in terms of the choices that we make, um, we make them based on data that we have gathered from previous experience. And so the miracle grow, my son last, um, went last spring, a year ago, gave us some gallon pots of starts that he had made of tomatoes and other things. And the soil that he used was that miracle Grow. And I'll tell you, once we put it out in our um, Vigo gardens, our raised beds, they did better than plants that we have, have had for the past 12 years. So do you think I'm gonna use miracle Grow potting soil to try for myself? <laughs> Absolutely. We like to use what works. And in terms of the Kellogg, I couldn't find anything um, that states that there is really bad stuff in that Kellogg. We've used it now for three years with very great excess. And so I know that various gardeners have their own special choices of the soil amendments that they use. And so I thought it would be a great thing for um, all of you to comment on the things that you like, the things that work for you in your gardens, and include the part of the country that you live in. Uh, we live in high desert on the Colorado Plateau in Utah and uh, we are in zone seven, seven B. And we use what works for us. And I have gone through a whole lot of different trial and error of various brands. So we're gonna head out to the greenhouse and show you our month long preparing of the, um, I have some great big blue barrels out there that we've used for a couple of years and show you what we're doing with those and the things that we're planting. So see you out at the greenhouse. So it is the first week in March and we're getting these, I have 10 of these blue barrels ready in the greenhouse. Um, well, they're not ready. That's what I'm starting to do is to get them ready. You can see by looking here that um, how much the soil has pulled away, dried up and pulled away um, over the winter. And so, and also the soil has really shrunk. I had put a lot of leaves in the bottom knowing that this is exactly what would happen. So I was in here a couple of hours ago and I just so this soil but look it just hardly even got down at all so there's still a lot of dry soil there I'm going to need to soak and soak this to get it completely um, damp again and then I'm going to layer other things in so let's just take a quick lock down here down this row and we can see I'm just going to leave uh, some of the leftover biomass in from last year's planting because I'm going to bring the soil up to the top and so those will all be covered but you can see the different levels of how much things um, flattened down over the course of the growing season so over the next few days I'll be working these barrels 
getting the soil completely wet all down to the bottom and then layering. And there's one down here at this end I wanted you to see. Look how much this one shrunk down. We, it went way, way down, so I must have had a lot of leaves in the bottom here. So I'm going to be working on these over the next few days and we'll bring you back when I'm starting to actually layer things. So Jim and I are out here in the greenhouse. It is the first week in April. In fact, I have a son who, whose 50th birthday is today. Happy birthday to my Scott. And um, we are getting ready for spring planting, which is late this year. We woke up to another snowstorm this morning. It's melting now, but we had about two inches on the ground. These are the plants that I, um, the lettuce that I planted the first part of March, so they are going strong. I separated these out into individual little cups. These are still clustered. I'm growing some of these in the house, and we will bring you in to show you those in another video. Today we're going to finish these blue buckets. We're going to be putting a layer of um, the Kellogg mix on the top of the leaves after we get the leaves mixed in with the soil below and then top that off with some composted steer manure and then I'll be ready to transplant some of the lettuce over to these buckets and then also just seed plant some other things. We're about ready to do that. I have tomatoes starting right here but so far nothing has come up. So it has been about 10 days and I'm hoping that they're still okay. So we're gonna get on with this work and bring you back when we've got some things planted. So this bucket now has the leaves mixed in with last year's soil. This bucket has now the Kellogg raised bed and potting mix, which is like this bag that's in the wheelbarrow on the top. The next step here is I will come back and mix that in with the layer below, and then Jim will top that off with some um, steer manure. So we'll come back step by step. So here is Jim pouring the organic steer manure on the top of the mixture of uh, the Kellogg and the leaves and last year's. Ooh, there's a worm in there. That's great, I just saw it. So here's what the buckets look like after I've mixed in uh, the Kellogg, the leaves, and the previous winter soil. Worms. Anelida. <laughs> and another one here. Oh, this will be so great. So we have all 10 buckets now ready to plant. I've mixed up just the top three inches of soil on this last deposit of the um, steer manure that Jim put in. So now I'm going to be doing some transplanting. All right, I have transplanted lettuce into three of these buckets. I've got some romaine, some butternut, some, everybody, oh, some Simpson and also most is just mixed lettuce. I'm going to be growing lettuce in three places because I want to be able to produce it no matter what the conditions are. So I've got a kitchen garden that I'm putting some in out here in the greenhouse and then the ones in this tray I'm saving to put in our outside garden probably in about a month. And then the tomatoes, once they come up and get going, they will also be planted in two places, outside and then um, right here in the greenhouse. So um, I'll bring you back when I'm gonna be doing some seed planting probably in a couple of days. 
Good morning. We're out in the greenhouse very early this morning. We're expecting some workmen to come work in the kitchen. Hopefully they're going to finish everything off this week. We're keeping our fingers crossed. So we're going to finish up this video. It's been probably three, maybe four days since I transplanted lettuce over in the blue bins, and we'll go check on those in just a minute. But I do want to show you that, um, my gosh, my lettuce down here is just exploding. I'm not going to be able to wait very long before I put it outside. Um, hopefully we're supposed to be in the 70s next week, and uh, which means warmer nighttime temperatures, so hopefully this will be okay. I have two rows right here of herbs. I have oregano on this row and parsley on this row. So I'm going to be transplanting those to my indoor kitchen herb garden uh, when they get just a little bit bigger. These are the ones that I had targeted for putting outside, so we'll see how that goes. But look at my tomatoes. Not one of them has come up. Now, I used um, potting soil, whose name I cannot remember, that a woman in Arkansas, whose um, YouTube channel I watched for a while before Jim and I started our own channel, and she had recommended it, and so I've had some sitting around, and I don't know if it's the soil, I don't know if it's the seed, but I'm not getting anything. So, over here, this morning, I filled um, these solo cups with more miracle Grow indoor potting soil. I think it's indoor. No, in, yep, indoor. We'll see how it goes. But the water, of course, is taking a long time to percolate down, so I'm not planted anything yet until I get full percolation. I should have done it in mass, but didn't think about it until I already had it in the cups. So it'll be a few hours yet before I'm going to be planting because, as we all know, potting soil isn't the easiest thing to hydrate. You can see that the dry is just coming up like crazy. So I have water in the bottom here and um, so it can percolate upwards and I give it a top watering so it will percolate downwards. So hopefully we'll get some action on this uh, before the end of the day. Um, I won't be showing you new planting of tomatoes. I'll just show you after they come up and we can start um, then following, tracking their progress. So uh, let's go over here. So uh, this is my work table and I've got my seed kit open and I've selected the seeds that I'm going to be planting today. Now this setup is a, a waste basket that we got at the dollar store or I can't remember and it's going to go in the house in my indoor garden. I'm going to fill it up to here with soil and then I'm going to plant some broccoli rob or rapini as it some kind, sometimes is called. It's a broccoli relative. It's an Italian non-heading broccoli grown for flavorful asparagus-like spring shoots and leaves. And it is fabulous. So I'm going to put some in the greenhouse and some here. As I've explained, now that I am completely retired and can devote the time that I need to the greenhouse, I'm wanting to build up it I'm a, I am wanting to build it up to the point where it is really going to produce some good food for us. And it takes year-round management to do that. Um, so far, we've not been successful in the wintertime. The winters get too cold and we don't have heat out here. Summers get way, way hot. And even though we've installed this wonderful fan, it still gets pretty hot. I'm going to be on a learning curve for the next couple of years in terms of what we can grow. But I'm going to be growing things in two or three places. I want an indoor kitchen garden for herbs and lettuce, some greens. I have carrots sprouting in there for the very first time ever I have been successful with getting carrots to sprout in a tub just like this. Um, so I'm going to show you that kitchen garden in a different video. Uh, then we are also in the second place trying to grow things here in the greenhouse and then also outdoors. I'm taking lots of notes collecting data so that I will know and I'm going to be doing redundancy systems trying to grow things in at least two places to see which uh, works better. So um, this rapini will go some out here and some indoors. Then I have some summer squash that we're going to be putting here in the in the blue barrels in just a minute. Some mixed peppers I'm going to put in here. This is some cantaloupe that we'll put in a blue barrel here. And then just for the fun of it, and because I absolutely love flowers, I'm going to have a barrel of flowers. Um, and I, 
I'm going to be putting them in a couple of places. Now, one of the things that I'm going to use plantings in these blue barrels for is to produce transplants for putting in our outdoor um, raised beds. I did that last year with cantaloupe and it worked phenomenally well. And so I'll be doing it with the peppers and the squash as well. Um, so we'll have some growing in here, some growing outside. There are some things that just are not conducive for growing in my kitchen garden, you know, like peppers and squash and things like that. So I'm going to get busy right now and um, show you what we're going to do. I'm going to be saving these three for tomatoes, so we won't be planting those today. I will be planting the three there, and then in the far one is where I'm going to be putting flowers. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do the planting, and we'll come back, back when that is done. Okay, yay! We've got all of these planted now, and I'll come back and make little signs for each one rather than leaving the seed packets there. These three are saved for tomatoes. I have three with lettuce. Uh, most of the lettuce is just doing great. I have a couple over here that are wilting, but I have plenty of replacements that I can retransplant back over here. Now, I have prepared the bucket for the rapini, and how I did it was I layered the uh, soil with water, soil, water, soil, water, so it is percolated all the way down, and you can see in the bottom pan that it has drained beautifully. So I am going to put probably about six seeds here, and then I will likely ultimately end up with maybe two. You know what? I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to put about four down the middle because these are big plants and I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to keep them in the house so we'll see. I grew a peony outside a couple of years ago and, um, and it worked great. Wow, these are teeny tiny little seeds. Look how tiny those are in my dirty seed hands. Okay, I'm putting about two or three in each hole, and then I'll decide which one looks the best. And then I'm going to put um, some of these over here in my seedling starter as well because I want some outside again this year. So this will go back in the house with us. I'm going to close up my seed bin. And this wraps up this video for our early spring planting. So we will bring you back periodically to check on progress. And I hope to learn new things every single season. So ultimately, we're going to have a greenhouse with thriving food growing inside. So thanks for being with us, and we will see you at our next video.